Hi, happy Pongal, Lohiri, and Makar Shangranti. This is going to be the first lecture on a series of lectures on Riemann integration, also Riemann steel just integral integrations. Okay, as I said, it's very important that you review your concepts about the least upper bound and greatest lower bound or if you want a fancy latin language infimum and supremum okay and in the real number system playlist you will see the third lecture exclusively deals with your lub glb with a lot of very easy examples and you will see all those examples were handpicked because they are repeatedly used in analysis especially in integration theory so you it will be good wise if you stop this video and go and review that and then come back and if you are mastered of course yes please go ahead okay so let us start sharing and we will start our work so all of you should know in high school you always do differentiation first and integration you do later as anti-differentiation reverse operation but in reality integration is more than 2000 years old when our forefathers wanted to find the area of various regions or volume of various solids okay what they did was integration okay so it's a Newton's ingenious idea to introduce differentiation and thought of this indefinite integral concept okay don't worry towards the end of the course perhaps on eighth or ninth lecture we will prove what are what is called fundamental theorem of calculus which puts newton's way of integration on very rigorous footing for us okay but it was his definition it is a newton's definition of integral but we can see it coincides with our definition right so what is the basic idea the basic idea see if you only want to compute the area the simplest case is if i have an interval okay i know what is the length of the interval okay therefore i know how to find the length based on that if you give me a rectangle then also i know what is the length namely the length of this interval product multiply with the length of this interval that is length into breadth or whatever you call it L times B so this is the simplest example of finding area now what integration theory deals with is okay in the plane R2 we don't want to compute arbitrary areas but it can perhaps it can be done but with a very ingenious tricks okay but let's not worry about it for the time being what it tries to do is it tries to find the area of some special regions which are regions which are okay at, to start with let me assume the function yeah there is a function here from a b to r so let us assume it's bounded and it's also non-negative and this is my a this is my b okay then let us look at this kind of area which is bounded by x equal to a x equal to b and this is y equal to 0 this is y equal to fx okay so this is the area we want to find okay so integration theory to start with deals with finding the areas of some special kind of regions like this which are bounded by four curves two curves are easy curves x equal to a x equal to b which are uh, straight line curves and y equal to zero that's also straight line curve the fourth curve is the real curve y equal to fx okay we at present we are assuming this is positive now let's understand how to do this okay suppose i have something like this as i said okay maybe i should draw a better picture i'm not very good at drawing even on board here it is slightly more difficult for me but let me just say like this like this okay suppose i want to find the area up here right what is the easier way of doing that the idea is again analysis as i have been saying is an approximation you try to approximate something 
by known quantities for example here what i could do is i can try to do like this find the rectangles which are yeah inscribed in this see this is the rectangle which is inscribed and this is a rectangle which is inscribed therefore this is point the area of these things and sum them up okay they have points in common but they are their area is zero like this adjacent sides okay right or i can also try to do circumscribe that is you enclose it in a bigger rectangle okay this will be this rectangle this rectangle and this may be this rectangle you follow that so the area of the region we are looking for is enclosed by okay it contains these areas that is the union of areas of the inscribed rectangles and it is contained in area of the circumscribing inscribe that is inscribe right inside circumscribe right circle it around circumscribe okay so these are the things which are circumscribed if you want i may make a new new circumscribe will be like this okay inscribe maybe we can use a different color scheme okay inscribe maybe only this right therefore my area okay call it the area whatever there what is the area area bound by these regions y equal to 0 y equal to fx x equal to a x equal to b this area is contained in the union of these areas okay or sum of areas of the circumscribing scribing rectangles and similarly this is contained in this contains some of areas of rectangles inscribed in by now you should have used to my way of writing inscribed inside the area in the region you understand that this gives an approximation you understand so what our plan is to find the area we try to find all possibilities okay just to make sure that you understand let's look at a very simple example suppose this is what i want to find out this we know don't say i already know okay one this is y equal to x suppose i want the area my function is f of x equal to x on the interval zero one i want to find right what I can, what I said is, suppose I can look for this inscribed thing. Here, inscribed thing is just a zero. There is no width. Whereas the inscribed thing is here. You understand this, right? The inscribed thing is just no zero width. Because the minimum is this. If I the moment I try to do something else, therefore here it is zero. And let us say this at the place half, then this will be one and a half times and here it is again half therefore half okay this is zero plus one fourth which equal to one fourth do you understand this please pass review if necessary whereas the same thing i can do better suppose this is my one fourth this is my half this is my three fourths and this is my one right here the inscribed thing is zero okay and here what is the inscribed thing one fourth but this is one fourth you understand this because this is half minus one fourth therefore one fourth times one fourth this is area and here half times one fourth that is one eighth and here it is three fourths times one fourth that is yeah three by 16 do you understand this are you following yeah so we are deployed do you understand this earlier it was one fourth here it is are you following one fourth by one fourth plus one two and this is again three by four 
I hope I wrote it correctly. Yeah, so you can add this thing. Three by four is one, three and a half. Okay, one, one, three, three by two times one fourth. That gives me three by eight. Oh, I think something is wrong, but let us see. Uh, one, oh, this is sorry, one, this is five by two. This is one fourth plus half, therefore five by two. There, right, sorry, five by eight. Okay, this is better than one by four. That because you understand this, this is two by eight. All right, whatever else I got five by eight. So I improved. So you can see that I can again go slower like this. Okay, I can again take a finer thing. Okay. You can see that I can keep on improving. Do you follow that? So this is the basic idea. What is the basic idea? So we want to introduce the notion of a partition. Okay, let us start with our thing. We will always work with closed and bounded intervals in R and functions f from a, b to R which are bounded. Right? Okay. The, let us also assume this m of x. m is less than equal to f of x less than equal to capital M for every x in a, b. Okay. Instead of saying mod f x is less than equal to something, I am writing like this. I am writing a lower bound for f as well as an upper bound for f. Okay? Right. So, this is our assumption. Now, the first thing is we want to look at what is meant by a partition. Partition of the interval a b. So, what is that? So, this is a. This is b. So, let x not equal to a. Then, let us look at x1, which less than x2, etc, etc, less than xn minus 1 and xn equal to b. Okay. So, partition is a finite set of points x0, xn, so that x0 is less than x1, less than x2, and x0 equal to a, less than xn minus 1, less than xn, which is equal to b. Then, we call this as a partition. You understand this? Okay. Now suppose Q is another partition. Okay. I say Q refines P or it's a refinement of P. P. If P is a subset of Q. What is P? P is X0, X1. Let us call these things as nodes. Okay. The nodes of P, every node of P is a node of Q. So, how does it look like? You look at what we did. Look at this. Here, the node, we partition 0, 1 into 3, x0, x1, and x2. Okay, this is my P. Now, let's look at, this is a refinement. This is x. x0 is this. x1 is this. If you want to call it y0, y1, and y2, your y2 is nothing other than your x1. And y3, and y4 so you got it you understood that this is a partition q which has 0 1 fourth half 3 fourths and 1 whereas this has 0 half and 1 okay this is a refinement of this have you understood yeah okay right again how do i generate easy examples okay easy examples are suppose you start with a b okay i'm just trying to generate how to look at partitions okay yeah i immediately don't want to define various things i can subdivide it into equal parts that is this is a midpoint All right therefore how many sub intervals are there in the first partition p1 2 and p2 what do i do is i subdivide each of the sub intervals into equal parts again now this is the one this is the one okay this is the midpoint of a and c and this is the midpoint of c and b so how many things are there how many elements are there in the partition so how many sub intervals are there one two three four therefore p2 is four which is two squared now how will it be p3 again do the same thing 
now put the sub thing and put something put something and put something so i introduce four more as a midpoint set there are already four therefore it is a8 which is 2 cube you understand this now do you see that p3 is a refinement of p2 p2 is a refinement of p1 yes okay i think it's a time that uh, i should say pause review and proceed okay and there may be many partitions you will see that you know depending upon the situation i will choose my partition that is where the real strategy comes okay right okay now how do i do use partition once i have a partition let us look at this example again something okay don't worry about the, whether the thing looks good or bad a this may be my b and suppose i have a partition this is my x1 etc and let us call it xi minus 1 xi okay this is my x1 this is my x0 right then what do i do is i want to look for what is the maximum possible area of an inscribed rectangle okay so this is my x1 okay in that i want the maximum possible area so this is my x f of a therefore this is the maximum possible area you understand this how do i do that you may think it's a minimum minimum of the function f on the interval a to x1 do you follow that for example in this xi minus 1 to xi okay you will think this is the minimum and in this you will say this is the minimum right because that we have drawn continuous curve you may think of it but how do you replace in terms of analysis okay what you look for is okay let us give a name let us call the ith interval ith sub interval rather xi minus 1 xi okay on that let us look at the values of the function f of x as x varies over xi minus 1 to xi yeah. you understand this on this right this is the value this is the subset of real numbers this is non-empty and do you see this is bounded above as well as bounded below because each fx is we do you remember our assumption fx is greater than or equal to little m less than or equal to capital m right therefore this is a subset non-empty subset of real numbers which is bounded above as well as bounded below therefore the glb that is greatest lower bound of this set exists this is okay and similarly least upper bound for this set of numbers exist that we denote by mi of small mi of f equal to the glb of this set and capital mi of f to be the least upper bound of the same set okay now, what is this so what do they describe now this is the maximum are you following right now let's look at mif okay if f is understood we will simply write mi okay so that life will be easier so mi times let's look at xi minus xi minus 1 notice that this is a positive number right because xi is greater than or equal to xi minus 1 greater than according to our assumption right now what does this say this says this is the area of the largest rectangle inscribed in the portion of the graph here right on xi minus 1 to xi look at the function look at its graph and look for the maximum possible area of a rectangle which is inscribed here that is the precisely this right then you understand this so this has a geometric meaning what is the geometric meaning okay understand this and what should be the geometric meaning of this this is let us look at this here it is this mi okay according to me this seems to be the maximum therefore this is your area you understand this this will be 
m i times x i minus x i minus 1 whereas this will be m i small m i times x i minus x i minus 1 do you follow this yeah so if i sum these things m i of f into x i minus x i minus 1 what do you think i get i am getting looking at this kind of rectangles some of the areas of the rectangle you follow that yeah this is what we said earlier some of the areas of rectangles inscribed in the graph under the graph if you want you follow that and what will be this object you can see that's nothing other than some of these areas so this is the maximum so these areas and here this is the maximum these areas these areas here this is the maximum these areas here this is the maximum these areas follow that so what is that that is some of the areas of just about the smallest rectangle which is circumscribes okay so this is the smallest rectangle which is circumscribed the graph over the interval xi minus 1 to xi and this is the one xn minus 1 to xn this is the smallest you understand this therefore intuitively it's very clear our area what is the area area is we are interested in the area this is the area we, we are interested in this area okay under the graph the area under the graph is squeezed between this finite sum this i equal to where to where 1 to n and this also i equal to 1 to n our area is squeezed between this area and this area do you follow that yes draw your picture my picture may be very cluttered and not good but i'm sure being young you will be able to draw much better picture so the first sum is what one denotes by the lower sum this is l f p okay how do i define or read it as lower sum of f okay related to or corresponding to the partition p or related to the partition p the partition p you understand this by definition we call it uh, sometimes one also calls lower darbo sum partition this is by definition i will drop f now xi minus xi minus 1 I equal to 1 to n okay so what does the lower darbosum says it approximates the area under the graph from inside okay so what do you think you will call this what will you call this capital m i times x i minus x i minus 1 you will call this as upper sum of f corresponding to this you will see books sometime write like this okay i read it the very natural way this is the upper sum of f related to the partition p whereas here you may say upper sum relative to the partition p of f okay if you want to read it you follow that now what what does this geometric meaning of this below this is the sum of the rectangles which just about cover okay so the what does this what is the geometric meaning of this this approximates the area under the graph from above the lower sum approximates the area from below from inside and this fellow cap the upper sum approximates the area from above do you follow this that's why i started with the example 
please pause review and proceed okay all right all right next what do you want to do let me see which one i had uh, draw tablet okay good okay now let's look at some easy examples to have an idea of upper sums and lower sums the easiest case of course is f is a constant function f a equal to let us say to r and f of x equal to c for all x in a b notice that when i want to define upper sum lower sum i do not have any restriction about the function the function is bounded it may take negative values or positive values for trying to understand the geometry i am trying to draw only the i am assuming the function should be positive do you understand this but the yeah, in reality to define these things i do not require f to be positive it could be it may take both positive values zero values negative values anything is okay yeah, it, it should be a bounded function and that's all we require do you understand this okay let us go slow let us okay there are lot, so lot of small things if you understand those things very thoroughly you will follow this now this is my a b okay now you start with any partition okay suppose p is a partition x not to x n right now on x i minus 1 x i okay what is your m i m i is the g l b of f x where x where is over the interval x i minus 1 to x i But remember, the function f is constant. Therefore, m i is also zero, and capital m i is also c. Do you follow that? Therefore, what is our lower sum? Lower sum f p is summation small m i, which is c into x i minus x i minus one. I running from one to n. What is this? C is common. This is x one. Yeah, minus x naught plus x two minus x one plus x n minus x n minus one. Do you understand? So x one cancel with this, x two will cancel with this, x n minus one will cancel with something here, right? Therefore, what I'm left with, I'm left with x n minus x naught, which is c times b minus a. You follow that? right now what does this say suppose for the time being c is positive okay then this is the graph of the function this is y equal to c therefore i want the area but what is the area under the graph it is just a rectangle okay whose basis of length b minus a and height is c therefore the area should be b minus a if b were negative if b were negative sorry c were negative then what do I get is c times b minus a. So I attach a negative sign to the area. Are you following? Have you understood what I am trying to say? Okay. Right. I, don't worry. We will just look at it in a civil example. Now similarly, what should be upper sum? Upper sum is also same. So it is also c into b minus a. Yeah. Have you understood? So the, you can see our method actually produces the actual area except the, when the function say the constant c is negative what you get is the area is c times b minus a in particular if c equal to minus 1 our area will be minus of b minus a which is same as a minus b okay right just to make sure that you understand let's look at another example okay so pause review proceed now let's look at another example let us assume my interval is minus one to plus one 
and 0 here the value is let us say 1 and here the value is 2 and here the value is 10 what do I mean by that I mean that f of f equal to 1 if minus 1 less than equal to x less than 0 and f of 0 is 10 and f of x equal to 2 where 1 less than x less than equal to 2 sorry 0 less than x less than equal to 1 this x equal to 0 you understand this now let us look at how what will be the graph will look like this is minus 1 this plus 1 therefore this will look like and here this will be dot 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 here it is going to be something like 10 okay here this is the picture and here it is going to be like this this is 2 and here again dot 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 yeah on this this is the rectangle whose this side is missing and this is a rectangle whose side is missing and what is the area here this area is 1 this area is 2 so I expect the area should be 3 its intuition are you following the length is here 1 height is 2 and here 1 and 1 yeah okay now let's try to understand what let's choose a partition p so uh, you can see now i told you the trick is to choose a partition very strategically to do something about to save or uh, to find to achieve our goal to find the area so uh, what is the problem point here for this function the problem point is zero so what do you do if you had been going through my analysis videos you know that divide and conquer isolate this guy the guy the trouble giving guy is x equal to zero and put him in a very small narrow jail you, yeah you understand what i mean yes <laughs> so what i'm going to do is i'll put a minus one and this is zero this is plus one i'll put this following in a very very narrow jail minus one by n and one by n you understand this so my partition let me call it p n if you want consists of 0 minus 1 by n and 1 by n and 1 so this one side sub interval this another sub interval this is the third sub interval do you understand this now i want to compute the lower n so what is the lower sum and upper sum what is the lower sum see minus 1 to this what is the length the length is going to be 1 minus 1 by n and what is the function the function is a constant namely 1 therefore this is it are you following yes right now let's look at this the second interval are you following this here the length is minus 1 by n minus of minus 1 will be plus 1 therefore 1 into 1 minus n that's what i wrote I into 1 okay this is the value of the minimum plus now on the interval minus 1 to 1 by n what is the minimum so, see that there are points here therefore the points are that value as 1 there are points here the value is 2 and at point this point the value is 10 therefore the minimum is 1 right okay 1 is the minimum that is a the GLB of the function on this interval times length of the interval length of the interval 2 by n therefore into 2 by n you follow that okay nah. right what is the length of this interval this is again for the same reason length of the interval is 1 minus 1 by n and what is the length the small l yeah, mi okay what is the infimum or the glb of the function here it's a constant here which is 1 are you following therefore the lower sum is going to be 1 minus 1 by n okay 2 times 2 into 1 minus 1 by n plus 2 by n sorry here the function is uh, 2 2 sorry yeah yeah the function is 2 I am, I am sorry I I should have said this 2 so this is 3 yeah 1 plus 2 into are you following because what is the mi here 
the value for this after positive 0 after 0 for x positive up to 1 the value is 2 so I wrongly wrote 1 okay right therefore it's 2 into 1 minus 1 by yeah have you understood okay now let's look at u of p okay now the, here there is no problem it's the same thing there also this is 1 minus 1 by n into 1 plus now let's look at this second interval here i am looking for the lub the, the function takes only three values 1 2 and 10 therefore what is the lub 10 into length of the interval is 2 by n yeah 2 by n times 10 plus the next one is also the same 2 into 1 minus 1 by n yeah because on this the function is a constant namely 2 therefore lub is also 2 or if yeah therefore what do i get i again get 3 into 1 minus 1 by n plus 20 by n yeah do you see something very interesting go back intuitively we felt this almost as good as a close rectangle okay only this side is missing here therefore the area should be one and here the same thing here we saw this area is missing we can miss this area if i okay i am looking at minus one to closed minus one close to zero open and here zero open to one closed okay so this is on this i am rectangle length of two this is true okay therefore this area will be two this area is three therefore we thought okay our intuition says the area under the graph should be three right now with respect of partition pn okay this is pn but i wrote as p but it's okay so you can see the lower sum gives me three into one minus one by n plus two by n right this is sn let me write this n now as n goes to infinity where do you think this goes to 1 minus 1 by n goes to 1 3 times that will go to 3 this will go to 0 therefore it goes to 3 and here also the same thing you see that so what it says is that when we take n larger and larger i am getting a better and better approximation yeah Oh, pause review and proceed so I will do one more example third example with that I will stop okay third example is a function you have from a b to r let us say it's an increasing function okay increasing right you understand now suppose p is a par partition notice that i do not assume it's a bounded because f a will be less than equal to f x that will be less than equal to f b therefore this will be your little m this will be your capital m yeah very good now let's look at this p let p be any partition x naught which is equal to a x1 x n which is equal to b right and suppose i let me look at x i minus 1 xi can you tell me what should be your mi the infimum of the function here notice that for every x here fx lies between f of xi and greater than or equal to f of xi minus 1 and f of x, xi minus 1 is a point of this therefore this actually f of xi minus 1 and similarly mi is f of xi are you convinced now therefore we can write down what is the lower sum lower sum is going to be f of x naught into x1 minus x naught plus f of x1 into x2 minus x1 plus so on and f of x n minus 1 into x n minus x n minus 1 I'm for a very strange reason I'm writing like this but you can also do like this this is summation f of xi minus 1 into xi minus xi minus 1 i equal to 1 to n do you understand this and what is for u of fpi 
uap that is f of xi into xi by xi minus 1 i equal to 1 to n now yeah because on the xi this is going to be capital mi will be f of xi so that's what we are doing you follow that now do you see something very interesting right so this one you look at that f of x0 into x1 the next one will here will be f of x1 into x1 minus x0 are you following yeah right now what happens is something suppose i subdivide this a b into n equal parts that is what is my xi xi is going to be a plus i by n into b minus a where 0 less than equal to i less than equal to n you understand that so each of the part will be b minus a by n each of the sub interval xi minus 1 xi the length will be b minus a by n you understand if that be the case i have a much simpler formula for lfp what is lfp for this partition this kind of partition lfp see this is going to be 1 upon n common therefore what do i get i get 1 upon n into f of x naught plus f of x1 plus f of xn minus 1 and u of fp will be again 1 by n f of x1 plus f of x2 plus f of xn do you understand this you see that the, the reason why i wanted to say is that we have to choose partitions carefully depending upon the problem on hand okay it's easier to learn when we are looking at that usually textbooks what they do is they keep on proving theorems later when it comes to example they try to quickly go through it but this allows us to understand what is meant by partition how to work with partition so we will stop this lecture but please go through it this is not the usual way you will see in textbooks even in my book i will not do that like that mm -hmm. because this is the way i usually work whenever i learn a new concept i play with that concept for a while so that i become comfortable now you can see that i already showed how to generate partitions and how to choose partitions so that okay it will work or it will give us the result in a particular case all right depending upon the data available we have to choose for example let us look at that thing the so-called step function from minus one to plus one at f at zero is all of a sudden 10 otherwise it is well behaved function and uh, look let's look at the last example monotone increasing function what did i do okay i looked at something i found out but i wanted to simplify the lower sum upper sum in a somewhat more tractable fashion so what did i choose there i chose the intervals of the same length all the sub intervals have the same equal length then it becomes much easier okay right so with this we will play okay we will meet again we will have a lot more to say about this okay i hope all of you enjoyed please go through it don't give up it's very easy okay play with this on your own if you want instead of increasing function look at a very specific increasing function for example on the interval 0 to 1 f of x equal to x if you are more adventurous you can also say f of x equal to x squared and partition you can choose as 0 n and each each sub interval has equal length 1 by n okay play with it f of x equal to x or f of x equal to x squared and i hope you all remember the formula for okay the sum of first n squared okay n into n plus one into 2n plus 1 by 6 or something anyway you i think you are young you will remember much better play with it we will meet again take care stay safe